In an effort to let Charles and Josh and Steve rest their voices, they have tried to convince me to leave the class or the presentation tonight. Yay. And as much as um, anyway, so we're just going to go and we're just going to ramble here a bit. And Joshin's going to help me by doing most of the projecting up here. And again, anybody that has feedback, feel free to raise your hand and give your input because that's what games are about, right? Being informal, most of the time. Having fun. Um, and so I was actually just going to kind of start this out with a little feedback from you guys saying, how many of you would say that you don't play any games? You don't play any games. I'm going to say. What the hell are you doing here? Well, no. Hey, <laughs> okay, remember this is working. Okay, but so if you don't do any computer games, you don't do any iOS games, what? Is there a kind of game that you would like to learn? Did you like to, you know, not before computers or outside of computers? Do you like to do jigsaw puzzles or play card games? Um, anything like that. How many of you play cards at home? Used to. Used to. <laughs> what kind? Solitaire? Yes. No. How, how many of you play pinochle with your... With, have to resort, my poor husband has to resort to playing pinochle on his devices because his wife won't play with him. I, I, yeah, well, even when there's other family around. You should talk to her about that. Yeah, well, no, she doesn't want him to. Anyway, but, okay, so I'm, but I'm going to throw out just a bit here that for some of you, and even if you don't ever want to do what we might talk about as games later, then maybe to you, you get enough enjoyment from some of the other things that you do on the computer. Like I know that Stan spends all his time being enjoyed, or being entertained, shall we say, by doing genealogy things, okay? And that's the thing is that for some people, even though it's not the kind of game we're gonna show here, if you can get satisfaction and distraction, perhaps, from the everyday things by working on something on your computer, well, maybe that's a kind of a game to you. Um, but that's not the kind that we're going to talk about tonight, because tonight we are going to talk more about the ones that are somewhat more colorful, um, puzzling, whatever. Um, the mouse tracks that you got that had the cover. I don't know if any of you recognized it um, because it is kind of a what you'd call a, a fan art. It's it's not the actual. It's not actually something from any of the games, but it's based on the Myth series. And I did realize this. We had like two errors in mouse tracks this time. Yeah. And one of them was that we didn't explain what the cover graphic was about. We did get the the you know, got permission to reprint it, but we didn't really explain to people who didn't know that this is from Mist, and that because the symbol in Mist, one of the early images, um, if you go to the, let's see, the Mist, that one I think, which unfortunately is probably going to give you an ad, but there is um, the cleft, which is kind of a fissure in space, and it actually turns into a fissure in the ground, that this person falls through. And so that's the falling man is an icon or an emblem that is associated with mist. And so that's, if you've ever played mist, you, you saw that, and that was what it was about. And that's why when Lauren found this graphic, and. He was like, well, this would be excellent for cover, for art to go with our story about gaming. And that's part of the joy that we get from gaming, is that it's not just the game, it's not just the, you know, the solving the puzzle, it's the fact that you can sometimes also find other artists or musicians or even just people 
who are the people who create these, these games, that it's really talent. And as we've watched games go or grow over the years, they've gone from the very pixelated, which I don't know if you can put yours back up. Joshin earlier was showing something about Zelda, right? That was very black and, well, I thought it was kind of brown. But anyway, it was, it's very much one of the older formats of games. And that's what, you know, whenever we used to have those, we, it was cool, it was still fun. You know, we didn't know that all these years later we would get picture, almost video, you know, film quality graphics from some games. And so, oh, that was 93. Thank you, caught that part. So that's part of what we have enjoyed as this was kind of meant to be that, you know, Charles and I have played games through the years, Joshin, Anne and Lauren, you know, uh, those of you who do play games, you've seen some of this. Um, and so part of the thing that you have to do in each game is A, you have to figure out what the rule is or what, what is it that you're trying to accomplish in this. And you have to learn how to manipulate your computer or your iPad. And so that is something that is part of game 101 you might say, well, let me, you know, do you, do you have a question about that? Have you guys ever tried to play a game and couldn't figure out how to play the game? So what we, part of what I wanted to share with you tonight is how you can find out some help with that. Um, talking to at least one person, they hadn't heard this term, um, which is a walkthrough. And I confess to the fact that when it now comes to a game, even like Myst or um, Abduction, which was their newest, the newest one by Cyan, that there are many times where I have no clue what it is the game person really wanted me to solve or to see. And so I go look on YouTube and I look for a walkthrough. And I, you can get a walkthrough that is either just a text explanation, you know, they, they can start out with hints that say, okay, you're in this field, look for a certain tree. You know, it might just be that hint is what you need to get. Or you can get pictures that say, look for this tree, instead of just telling you to look at a tree. Or you can actually just watch somebody play along. And you can do that on YouTube, or you can do it on some um, actual more live streaming sites. One of them is called Twitch. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so those are the kind, you know, again, you can pick how much help you're going to want for this particular game. Um, Again, they're usually more entertaining if they're the more interactive type of games, like Abduction or Myst or Zelda, where you're actually moving through and having to pick up some objects or slay, you know, some of the games you have to go and fight a creature or fight another player. Um, so those are the ones that are going to be more useful for you for most of the time on a walkthrough. However, uh, one of the ones that we may show a little bit later on the iOS is called The Room. And again, this is a puzzle, um, a game about you're presented with this box, kind of an ornate box, and you have to figure out how to open it up by pushing this button or moving this thing into this other position. And for the life of me, I wouldn't find half of what it is that they want you to be able to, you know, I wouldn't know that this is supposed to go in that spot. I just wouldn't. So just, you had mentioned Twitch. It's, oh, did you find Twitch? Yeah, this person is actually playing the room game that Janet was talking about live right now and filming themselves playing the game. And um, 
there you can actually uh, from this website you can go and send text messages to the person while they're playing their game and they they oftentimes stop and respond to you um, and you can send money to the person if you well, like what they're doing but everything nowadays can be monetized it's and the person down here yeah that's probably the player right there um, hopefully she's not hearing us but this is one of the things that you have to watch out for on any of these sites is that because most of them are a web page so when you go to that web page like we would on any other web page you kind of want to look at it a little bit carefully and make sure that you're not getting accidentally sucked into the wrong link like you know you might get to one page that is just full of ads and it tries to give you pop-ups and all this <clears throat> if you get one of those i would back out and i would go look for a different one um, there was one that was i've used a couple of times the universal hints site um, i think it was one of the links i gave you and it's pretty good although they do i notice now they do have more ads on their page than they used to but this is one that's more likely to be just a text hint through. And if you go to the full walkthrough, like Joshin had on Twitch, where you're actually watching the person play, you have to be aware. Sometimes they will do the game where they're just playing it through and there's no, no commentary. You know, they just they play the game and it's very straightforward. Other times you'll get in and you'll, you'll find somebody that posted it where they're giving you their opinion about all of this. And that's very annoying to me because they're like, oh, why did they do this? Or why did they do that? Or, oh, no, I don't like this, you know? So each, again, it's like anything else. If you go to a site and you don't like what's there, you know, get out of it, go back. Um, but it is something that it, you might find it useful. Okay, if you're trying to do one of these complex games. And there are some games where I haven't even, guess it was, oh, that latest Zelda one. Because I've never played Zelda through any of its earlier incarnations. But the latest one that came out and everybody was raving about it. So I just went and found somebody who was playing it. And, you know, I just watched them because I would get as much enjoyment from just seeing what they were talking about rather than trying to do it myself. Um, myself, I like jigsaw puzzles, and I have um, a couple of games or versions that what I do when I find a game that I really like, I'll usually just keep playing that one over and over, as long as it keeps running. Um, and so, and I will usually try to get the ones that are free or low cost, you know, a couple of dollars. And so I usually have to put up with some ads. Um, there's a really good one for the Mac OS that's called Brains Breaker. My mom plays it all the time. And it's really nice because other than their pictures, you can also put in your own. Um, and so, but that's, again, part of the puzzle on that is just being able to get the pieces and to make some of the jigsaw puzzles that I see, they're too simple. They're all, you know, really big or really similar kinds of shapes. And some of these you can get so they're a little bit odder shapes. So if any of you like jigsaw puzzles, this is the way to play them without having pieces get lost on the floor. Um, let's see. And, and needless to say, there are numerous oh, yes. versions of these. I mean, uh, the sun is countless numbers out there. Some of them are good, some of them are terrible. So again, you can just you know go and look. Um, I was gonna talk kind of about how you get games because it has changed a lot. And one of the reasons that I stick with playing the same one that I like you know, I've got this one, I like it, I play it over and over again, is that I'm starting to have a real problem with the App Store when it comes to going out and finding some new program. Um, a, they either all look the same, 
or when I get into where I want to look at one, I can't read the fine print when you get in about telling, you know, how does this game, you, you get into the description of a program. And to me, I don't know what it is, whether it's my computer or what, I just find that it's getting to be, they make the, the text is kind of light gray and it's tiny and you can't blow it up. And so I don't spend a lot of time in the app store lately. I just, you know, if somebody has told me about a program that they like, I'll go and, and look for it. But I won't just go through and experiment like I used to. So, so um, does anybody out there have, you know, comments or suggestions on anything up that kind of we've been talking to at this point? The Mac OS version. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you like solitaire card games, there's <laughs> Solitaire Till Dawn, which has been around for quite a few years. And again, it's not just one card game. It's a lot of different kinds of card games. Um, there's also the one that we have more is called Eric's Ultimate Solitaire. Um, and that's one that we've been following this particular creator since back in the what? Yeah. The early Mac days. 91, I think. Yeah. Um, and he, he started with, you know, he had like three games in the package, and now he's, he's expanded it. I'm not sure there's a hundred like there are in, in Solitary Till Dawn, but it's just, the way that he puts the cards up, the way that they play, and you can set autoplay or something like that, um, I really do get hooked on it. And so it's, it's, it's actually something I, I'm about to the point where I keep threatening to take it off my computer because it's, it's like potato chips. Um, you know, <laughs> they say you can't eat just one potato chip. Well, I seem to have this problem with not playing just one game of solitaire. So, is but, this an app or is this a YouTube? Uh, those are apps. The, yeah, are you? You're, he is in the app store, and and again, there's there's lots and lots of people that are making. You know, I mean, there's lots of other versions <coughs> and and programs, and so if your brother says, well, I play, um, one of those others, you know, that's fine. It's, again, I will take a recommendation from somebody who, who says, I play this game and I really like the way it works. I will take that over just looking through the app store trying to find something. Um, if Eric ever quits making his version, you know, for some reason it no longer gets updated, I'll be sad. Um, I'm hoping that he won't do that. I'm hoping he'll still be around for many years. Um, and same with Solitary Till Dawn. I'm sure that those people will continue to upgrade. Yeah, so. It, so. Oh, Mahjong. Did you? Yeah. So, um, you can also, for some games, you might be able to get them directly from the developer. But again. Over the last couple years, you know, we've been finding, or we've, we've kind of talked about that in regards to other programs. So you just have to figure out what it is and investigate, you know, what's the difference between buying it from them and from getting it through the App Store. Uh, I think most of the time games are not going to affect your system in any way that they shouldn't be able to be available through the App Store. But again, you just have to look and see what the game is that you're trying to play. The other way to get games is through um, downloading from a company. There's two main ones called, one is Steam and one is GOG. And those are games that you're more likely going to have to sign online to play anyway. And so what they do 
is that you log into like the Steam website and you have an account and then you go into their choices and you say, okay, I want to play, um, which one might you have, Joshin? Uh, he's got a couple of dozen. Yeah, well, I know, and I just thought he might have something up there. Because um, we, we actually... Steam oh. is uh, very fun. There's a terrific variety of stuff. Like um, uh, one thing that kind of blew my mind was just more experimental things. Um, there was a, my wife is Iranian, and there was an Iranian developer who just um, wanted to make a little simple game based on um, geometry. Um, and so it was just a simple, like, $5 game. And um, sort of a spirograph. Pretty to look at. Yeah, it's like a spirograph. How many of you remember a spirograph? Or fractals? Do you guys know what fractals are? Because that's another. It's not really a game, but you can get an app to draw, kind of create your own fractals, and they're beautiful. And it's it's game like to me. Just trying to get past the introduction, but on this one, like, they'll show you a shape, and then you try to figure out how to recreate that shape. So sometimes I'm in the mood for fast games, sometimes in the mood for just a simple, relaxing game. So here we go, level one. So you're trying to recreate this shape up here, and they give you nice little instructions, both in Persian and in English. So let's say I clicked right uh, here. That doesn't match the shape up here, we can see. So I didn't get that one right. Anybody have any guesses where I should click? Not quite. Maybe a different edge? I heard 10 o'clock. Right there? I think it curved up too high at first. 12 o'clock? I thought everybody here said they didn't play games. Ah, oh, we got it. You did know math with the game? Um, well, but so the point what we were trying to get to was that he went, he logged into Steam, and then this is a game that he got on Steam. And so it sort of helps with you having to keep track of, you know, in the old days we had to buy, you'd go out and you'd buy a box and you'd have to get that disc, whether it be a floppy disk or a CD, and install it on your computer. Well, now you just log in Steam and they take care of getting the software for you. And updating it. And updating it. And it can also help where we had the experience of a game that's really not available for the Mac, but Steam, on some of their games, they will do the conversion or emulation mode needed so that you can play what's normally a PC game on your Mac. And so that helps in some, you know, some circumstances. So um, again, pricing on all games is just individual, something that you do have to you know, go out and look at. But keep in mind that you know, people are making their living at doing this nowadays. Um, we have some friends that are game developers and know just a very little bit about what they do, and they spend a lot of time working on these and coming up, again, they're, they're gorgeous thing, gorgeous creations now, but it is important that, that we don't just take the games for, you know, take them for granted and say, well, it's, I'm not going to buy it if it's not free. So, but what did you? I was going to say, yeah, uh, the, the better games that I have on my devices, I've actually paid money for. Uh, Hidden some of the games. ones that are free are really nice games, but how long is that developer going to support that game? 
Mm. When he's not getting paid for what he's doing. And that was more of it. Oh, and I don't have any loaded up. So, oh, not on Steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, 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 you need to support yeah. the people that are doing things um, you like. Other than like the okay. puzzle game. Okay. Oh, I did notice one of the things that was on the screen that said BAFTA winner. Is that a game? Yeah, uh, the BAFTA is like the British uh, Academy of Fine Arts, I think. Um, they're kind of like the Academy Awards, and uh, I think they do have a games category. Um, was that under this store? Uh, I, I don't know if I could find it again right away, but um, as uh, Janet said, there are um, lots of different styles of games all trying to appeal to different people. Uh-oh, Steve's going to come help. Um, yes, they do have <laughs> awards such as, um, I mean, it, it's like in the movies now where you get animation and um, CGI. What's the other thing I'm thinking? Anyway, there are awards. And um, quick, what was that one that just won? Um, one of the Academy Awards. Anyway, but yes, there there uh, can be categories. And now if you said if there was a BAFTA winner, it could be that they won. In fact, we probably could just Google it. But um, I know one of the things, the links that I had uh, for that Jack Wall, sometimes it's not necessarily the game as much as it might be the soundtrack or some of the other art. You know, it might be the, the story that goes with it is what's actually winning the, the award rather than just the game. Um, so he was going to, there he's got this. Now, Mist Exile, this was, again, it was one that came out in the 90s. And, but just playing this game, I was struck so much by the music. And that I went out and I found who is the person that created this. This is by a composer named Jack Wall. And he has gone on, he's done. Yeah, he did one of my favorite science fiction trilogy series of games. Yeah, and he does rate, he does for movies. And he does, um, in fact, I just, he, he's gonna go do a presentation for one of the, you know, um, screenwriter guilds or something down in California. I mean, he's very busy and very popular. And you just, when you find this kind of thing while you're playing a game, you know, just go out and do more investigation and find, hey, what is this that draws me to it? So, do you want to say something? I was going to show a couple games real quick. Oh, okay. Um, Joshin's computer, I guess, since he's queued oh, up. Oh, you bring your own? Or on my phone. Oh, on your phone. Okay. So, we're going to let Steve take over and do some uh, show. I'll be real quick. Do audio, unfortunately. He didn't have any games he thought you guys would be here. Hold your uh, phone up close to the mic. Here, I can hold the phone. Hold your phone speakers close to the mic. We'll see if we can. Audio is not even important. Mm -hmm. Can you do the uh, screen record? No, we haven't done anything with it except get the discs. I was just wondering if they played the same way. They're supposed to. Oh, that's not going to work while we're. It won't let me do it while we're in the dock connector. Okay. I'm going to use my can or use his camera. Um, point your thing at the. And yeah, don't worry about me. Okay, so I'm going to show uh, a couple quick little games here. Uh, so what Janet was talking about, like having a game that like sometimes you want something that's mentally challenging, sometimes you want something simple. One of my favorite games is simple. I'm done with it now. Um, it's not terribly huge. It's called Hidden Folk. And it's down here in the bottom row in the middle. Hidden Folks with, with the plural. And I think it was like $5 and then um, it comes with a couple levels, and then they did an app purchase for like three dollars to add some more levels. But effectively, it's just it's your your, your good old style uh, hidden uh, hidden person puzzle, and it's really simple. You just kind of like uh, you can pinch around. Um, one of the cool things about this game is that it's uh, all interactive, and so you can touch on stuff, and it makes noises. You might not be able to hear it, but you can just spam it. And so down here, it's telling you the list at, at the bottom of the things they want you to find. And so you tap on this one, it says, Explorer Garland is fascinated by the tongue of this reptile. 
And then, well, there was his tongue as a reptile, and he was looking for someone holding that little thing. And oh, they're right here behind the tree. Bing. You know, and so that's it. This is great on a cruise ship. I was on a plane. You know, you're just sitting there, just kind of like looking for stuff. It it works on the iPhone and the iPad, and it'll sit. So it's great on the iPad because you got the big screen to, to look at, and um, uh, it'll sync your your status between the two through through your iCloud account, so you can play on both. And so you can kind of look around and tap on bushes and see. There's there's a lot of like uh, false clues. And oh, there's a banana that dropped, and we can tap that banana. Oh, that banana was something we needed to find, a white banana. Sometimes you just discover stuff uh, by accident. So this little, this is a little starter area right here, you can see it's the size of it. But what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna jump real quick, and I'm gonna jump down to a level called Factory. And just to give you kind of an idea about the scope <laughs> of this, and trying to find the things in the land. It'll keep you busy. <laughs> um, I've done them all. It's quite amazing how stuff works. Sometimes there's little switches you have to throw to raise a gate to have someone ex get exposed or whatever. It's fantastic. It make, you can't really hear it, but it makes all sorts of little noises and, and um, yeah, it's on. But it's just, you know, you just tap around and you can open up these little doors and sometimes there's that, usually there's nothing there. It's all kind of like, aw. Um, but you can see down at the, oops, you see down at the bottom, there's a lot of things they want you to find in this particular map. And the people are all slightly different and they're all kind of drawn generically. So it's not easy, but it's a lot of fun. And it's actually very relaxing. And that one's called Hidden Folks. Another one, they're talking about um, uh, Saltar games. This one's called Flip Flop. And um, it's free. And then uh, it's got ads, or you can like pay for it. But basically, it's a um, it's a different ver it's a different take on solitaire, where um, you can play with one suit or two suits or three suit. But you can move cards as long as they're stacked in um, uh, in progressive order of the cards. You know, so you can take uh, let's see what can I do? I can take this seven and put it on this six, and I can take uh, I can't put that queen on the queen. And uh, let's see here, what else can I do? I'm trying to look real quick. Oh, let's just put some more. But when you tap and put more cards on there, it can, it can mess up your whole order. So I can take this nine and put this over here. You know, what do I do? I can take uh, this seven and put it on this six because it, it can go up or down, unlike regular solitaire. And uh, then you got to find a three to go on the stack. So you're looking for four aces and then you build up the top just like you would in normal solitaire. And then it gets really crazy when you play with two suits or three suits or four suits. You can really back yourself into a corner with this game. Um, but I like it a lot, it's being a variant. And then the last one, this one's called Bridge Constructor Portal. Ooh. So this is kind of a, this is a this game called Bridge Constructor, it's, it's been out for a while. And then this version is just a mashup with a, another popular game called Portal, which was kind of a shooting or a puzzle game. Um, the only portalness of this is just the, the level style. But what you do is you say, hey, I, uh, they're, they've put you in this, uh, you're a worker in the factory and they've put you in, in a responsibility of not letting the little uh, carts die. And so you tap drive and, oh, actually this is gonna pass here. But what I'll do is, uh, let's see, let me pause this. And, uh, get out you of had here. already built up a bridge yeah. on that one. Yeah, so I'm gonna clear it. So if you hit drive and, oh, I see, it's actually, that's weird. It's a tutorial? No. I haven't really done these before, but let's go build. You can kind of see the, the bridges here, and you can kind of like build out the bridges and the supports and whatnot. And then as you as you build them, things will fall apart um, and fall on the ground. And so it's it's really cool because it forces you to kind of think spatially and solve these bridge building puzzles. Um, and uh, and eventually, yeah, it, it's it's got physics and all sorts of fun stuff. Anyways, if you're in if you're in a building kinds of things, bridge constructor portal is a fun game. So those are three kind of games I play. There's all sorts of stuff on the App Store. Um, I just talk to my friends and find out like what I want to play. I played, I played the hell out of Alpha's Adventure when I was stuck on the cruise ship for 24 hours um, and, and was quarantined and couldn't play. I actually beat my friend's top score. And uh, so Alto's Adventure is is a um, a little bit of a it's Alto's Adventure and an Odyssey, but it's basically a skiing game, and uh, it's. It's very, very uh, well regarded. I die a lot on this. 
Yeah, so you can, so basically all you do, I've, I've got like a whole bunch of really nice, uh, I'm at the end of the game, so I've unlocked all the really good characters. But you just tap to start. Or you can just go downhill forever. And, and your little guy is gonna, well you can't do it forever, but you can tap and I can jump. And then you get bonus points for the little tricks you do. And so this game is just, it's, it's kind of soothing and frustrating at the same time, because you got to make sure you don't hit the rocks. You can kind of land on these flags right here. You can kind of grind them for extra points. You can do all sorts of fun stuff, and then eventually you'll earn a wingsuit. You can fly. But don't hit the rocks. Oh, oh there, I've, I've crashed. Boo. End of game. So uh, that's probably where Charles' games normally ends. Yeah. So, um, but I've actually had some games that have gone on for an hour and a half. Or, uh, got really, really good at like playing the games. So that's Alto's Adventure. So those are the kind of fun games I like. And does Odyssey? Odyssey isn't skiing. So what? How do they get around in Odyssey? Uh, Odyssey is very similar uh, to this game. Actually, it is kind of like skiing. Is it? Okay. But it has. It, it gets more complicated in what you can jump on and jump <laughs> off of. Heads Up is a fun party game. If you guys like party <laughs> games with your kids, uh, it's basically a game where uh, it's kind of like charades, but you you basically take your phone and you hold it up on your forehead and everyone else sees what they're supposed to be like get, yeah. you know, what they're supposed to be doing to make you guess at right and have all sorts of categories like film and sports and you know all that kind of stuff so that's a really fun game uh, for like that's party game so if you don't play games find some games because there's some awesome stuff out there and they're usually really cheap especially on iPhone and iOS usually like five dollars or less or less yeah and if you want we'll We'll, we'll put a list, we'll, we'll spam you with other ideas. I'd recommend keeping an eye on Apple's app stores on both the Mac and on the iOS devices because they have a very good editorial team that... Um, Thank you, uh, I just sort of exclusively now, if I'm in the mood to look for a game, I'll just take a peek on the app store and see what they're recommending, recommending because their recommendations and are often, really good. And they'll often be on sale too, like Game of the Day. Yeah. So you can yeah. get like a cheaper version of it for that, for that particular day. I did see a hand up. Uh, actually, I have a comment. There's one of the links uh, to a place called uh, Big Fish. Yes, we were. Okay, sorry. No. That's, a, that's another, so um, Janet was talking about stores where you can buy games. Yeah, and Big Fish is one that it used, well, again, it's one of those, some people have gone there a lot, and I've heard about people going there for games, but I, I have not myself gone there. Have you? I was going to say my wife subscribed to it for years, mainly because she could get free games, and she'd, give, she'd send a link to a nephew for like a birthday. But they'll tell you whether or not your device can play this game. A lot of the PC. The other thing is, they'll usually let you play the game for an hour. For an hour? For an hour. You know, they'll give you like a free trial. And so you could spend the whole day playing games for free. But, you know, like you say, you should probably buy something. Oh, leave that up for a minute. One of the things, too, is all the different kinds of games. Um, which here in Big Fish, so he's, he's showing they've got some of the categories there. There is also a category down the side. Um, Sorry. That's okay. We can, we can use these. So, but hidden object is sort of like the one Steve was showing you um, where there, um, in other games that I've played, you go in and there's like a hat, you know, it's kind of, blended in the background and you really have to search but again they tell you what you're looking for and it's not too hard once you get the idea so those hidden object kind of games um, card and board we've talked I think a lot about so far um, the match three are things like bejeweled I think they fall in that category um, the ones that you're trying, you know, you hit three things, get three colors together and they disappear. Um, and you're trying to keep the board from getting filled up or you're trying to uncover a board. Um, Tetris, how many of you played Tetris? Because again, that was one of the early games that really caught on, that really did really well. And now I think they have almost a whole category of different Tetris-like games. Or you'll see something that's touted as totally different, but you look and you go, that's Tetris in disguise. Um, 
the marble poppers are sort of like the match threes. Uh, Mahjong, notice it has its whole own category. And then there's the time management ones, which I was like, what do they mean by time <laughs> management in a game? And realized that that's one that I think I, we played one, but my sister plays several of them. And they're the ones that I would, I think they got started or were most well known by The Sims, um, where you are going to build a town or build, you know, some a city field. or a corn. Yeah, you, you go and you have to plant some crops so that you can mm -hmm. harvest them, so you can sell them, so you can get something else. You know, you gain points by doing this. but. It's time management because some of these things you have to actually wait for the passage of time. So you might go and you might say, okay, I'm planting this royal corn, but you can't take the next step until like an hour or so has gone by because that's, they're, they're building this into the game that you have to let some time pass. It's like product development. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in a way, those games can be kind of entertaining. I mean, they can be good because then, you know, you're going to sit down and you're not going to get sucked into it for three hours because you can only do this much and then it's going to kind of force you to go away. The, the problem with that then is that you have to remember to come back at the end of the time period and collect whatever was necessary or it might spoil and you won't get your points because your crop spoiled or something similar. So um, again, it's just, it's another whole category. There's tons of them. There are everything from um, some of the, the games that we used to think were <coughs> battle games or strategy games. They've got a bit of that built in because you have to build a fort to defend yourself. But a lot of them nowadays are more peaceful, and it is like building a city or being, um, you know, growing, having a farm. You can also, in the upper levels of these, you get sort of like where Steve was showing how his back, you know, his his level went to where it was all over the screen. You can cover quite a bit of space, and it can be a multiplayer game. Um, in fact, most of these work well if you do have other people and if you have like your family or friends that you want to invite, you can play with those people or you can play with just um, random people on the internet. And sometimes, you know, again, uh, Charles has a game that he plays that sometimes he has to play with other people and once in a while it's, do they even speak English? Um, <laughs> Our, my brother-in-law has gotten to where he's gotten very good at whipping up one, or bringing up one of the translate pages on the internet so that he can say, okay, this person just said this, what did, you know, what did they really say? Um, and so again, it's, you might find it challenging and fun or you might say, no, it's, I don't want to do that. So you just have to go into each one of these games and Experiment a little bit, but hopefully when you do, you will find something that is enjoyable to you. So, um, let's see, what other places was I going to talk about? <coughs> I don't know if I told it to remember this. I don't have to speak. Uh, well, that's what I was trying to see, but it won't let me. Yeah. So let me turn off this. Um, you had abduction, big fish yeah. games, ultimate hints, lumosity. Yeah. Now, one of the ones that gets that you may see advertised or get. Oh. Should I switch the gears? No, go ahead and do it on yours. I don't have a login for Google Moss. Oh, oh. And I thought, I don't know whether I put my app. Hang on a minute. I'm not connected to the internet. Right. Anyway. Make sure she's on the right network. Well, we'll see. Um, yeah, Lumin well, I think we can just talk about it too. Because you may have seen Luminosity, again, is 
where they give you a package of games. I mean, you can pick from different ones, but they help. They're promoting more of that their game is for brain training your brain or keeping your brain active. You know, so I, I frequently see this advertised in, um, like you know, the AARP magazine or something like that. Um, so you may have heard of that. Um, yeah, but again, it's another one that it will give you, so you get kind of a, a work, they call it a workout, and they go through different things, and you can get a free trial, um, and so you can pick, you know, kind of game, or you can pick math, and so it's just, yeah, it's, it's another place that you can go to. Um, Another thing I wanted to mention in talking or about Steve's game, Steve's games that he showed, because some of the ones that I have played over the years that I don't even have anymore because they were um, on my older devices are ones that are like um, drawing, um, what do I want to say? Again, you build things. Um, I had one that was called Enigma that was it looked like you were in space, and I wish I could still run it, but I don't have it here. Um, and you would have like water dripping into a pot, and you would have to put some spacers in, or other build, you know, levers or something, so that it would then fall into another pot. And it was very pretty and very much relaxing. Um, so the, those kind of games can be interesting. Just, and I wish I had brought better examples, but I couldn't find it. Do you want me to plug this in? No, let me look here. No, you're right. And yeah, plug in this one. Okay, last few minutes here on the iPad, because I do have a couple of examples. And I don't think we need sound. Okay, um, so this one starts out pretty easy. Oh, is it not going to run? Or did I just not hit it right? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. okay. Um, so this one you can see I'm at, I guess, level 22. And it, you get this frame and you get these squares and your object is to turn them until you get, so like this one, the green one, has a circle on it. So if I move these others out of the way, you'll find that one of these squares underneath here has a green circle. And so you have to, to just keep manipulating these until you turn it and you get it into the space where the lit part of the box ends up on the matching color. Does that let you turn it sideways? Um, no. Okay. So again, this is when you first, in, when you're in the first couple levels of this course, it's really easy. And as you go further and further, it gets a little more complex. But I like this one because I will sit down and just for a short period of time, try to figure out one of the levels. and. It's very simple, but I have been playing it for a while. And that one's called Cubor. And again, there are many different ones that are, or I'm sure there's others that are similar to this. Um, this is one that's actually older. Uh, I was surprised to find that they had updated it for the newer iOS. And this is one of the match three type games where you can, you swap until you get three in a row of a similar color and then they disappear. And in this particular one, you'll see that pencil comes in and erases, and your object is, that's how you keep track of whether you've actually cleared all the spaces on the board. And now this is one you can see it's um, added more ads recently. Didn't used to have that many ads. But it's, again, just a game. If you shake, this one has the feature if you shake it, it will redraw all the pieces. So if you feel like you're stuck, 
it's kind of sometimes just uh, energetic in itself to say, I'm frustrated, I'm going to just shake it and start all over with a new layout, but my still my same goal in the back. Question? Yes. Is it usually when you pay for the game, you don't get ads? You won't, you shouldn't get as many ads, for sure. Sometimes, what, what I've found is that I might have paid for like the early version of this game, because this one has been out um, in like iOS 9. And whenever it upgraded to the iOS 10, 11 version is when they, then it was like, well, you can either keep using this free with ads or pay us. And so that's, you know, just again, you look at it, and they're, they're not necessarily expensive. Oh, Steve wants in here again. Yeah, He's got one more, but, but let me show Marple first. Marple. That's this E up in the corner. And this one, again, this is one that I've had for a while, and I, I played it a lot, and then I didn't play it because it was on my older device. Um, start a new classic. And this is kind of a logic puzzle. And there's, there's a nice tutorial that tells you what all these clues are. You're basically, you're trying to get in each of the red, green, blue, orange rows up there, you're trying to get so that there's just one of the characters, like A, B, C, D, E, you just end up with one letter in each of those five spaces across. And the rules down here tell you that, like, um, the green, tells you that the one is in the same row as the A. So I know that if I could figure out where the A was, then I would, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna do this new thing, yeah, I wouldn't do that, okay. I, I this is just, anyway, so, whoops. Which one? Anyway, so, but you go through and you, you do your clues and you get rid of the ones that you don't want and you eventually end up with everything solved and they have added in this thing that tells you if you're actually taking out the wrong piece. So it's gotten a lot easier. But this was something that was fun. And if you like puzzle games and you like logic a little bit, it's something that you can go out and get. And that's called Marple. And now I'm going to unplug this and give it back to Steve. This, this will be really quick. I'll see if I can do it from here while I'm tethered. This is for something completely Microphone. different. Oh. Um. Oh, oh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we can do this here. I can hold for you. Well, now you have to be out of the way. Oh. That's good. Okay, so how many people have heard of augmented reality? Oh, yes. All right. Okay, so there's a whole new genre. Of, this is like not even really a game, but let's see if we can do this. Let's just see. Okay, here we go. So let's see here. Oh, wow. So we got a whole bunch of options here. Let's see if we can reset this. We're gonna have it find uh, some spot on the ground here. We're gonna tap. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Let's see, let's see if I can do this. I need two hands. We're gonna pick the free plane here. All right, you guys ready to duck? Because here it goes. Look out, look out, Fred. <laughs> look out, oh, 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 look out, look out, look out, Bill. Oh, God, oh, my. What am I, oh, gosh, oh, oh, boy. Here we go, oh, I'm up, I'm up, woo, I'm up. I made it. Okay, now where do I go? Let's see if I can bring it back. There you go. Oh, oh, coming in diamond. Oh, oh, look out. Oh, oh. Oh, did you guys buy your insurance? I've, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh. So that's some of the kind of fun you can have with... I've, I've seen all sorts of weird augmented reality games, like basketball games. Uh, there's one called Stack AR, which I don't have anymore. Um, it was just, some of these games put up too many ads for my liking. But the idea was it put a stack out in the, in the world, and then as a piece would fly through space, your, your job was to tap it when this piece was directly over the other piece. And any part that it didn't intersect would cut off and be smaller. And so you're tapping it. So you could play it at a bar on a bar top, and people don't know what you're doing. You're holding your phone up, and you're like tapping on their face, you know, and stuff like that. And, um, but then you get bigger and bigger and bigger until you run out of space. So, so AR is the shortcut for that. So if you get kind of a newer phone, like an iPhone 8 or newer, um, you can search for AR games. And there's all sorts of fun AR games. And not all of them are going to be like real winners. But it's just kind of another fun genre to, to check out. Yeah. 
going to say, because you know, Pokemon Go was one of the original that got really popular of that, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. Okay, so we've kind of rambled on and on <clears throat> and um, shown you some samples. Do you guys have any questions or, again, feedback? What would you like to be doing? Rose. We didn't even talk about those yet. <coughs> right. I had, uh, I had word games on here. Very good. How many of you do words with friends or something similar? No? Steve. Oh, Steve. <laughs> well, I haven't played in a long time. I also played, uh, I, well, I used to play Draw Something. It was kind of a drawing game. You guess what each other people are drawing. And good, another good example of a multiplayer game. Do you have any other samples? We have one in the back. Oh. Yeah, I have a question. So, because my phone and my iPad and I have a computer and you know, there's mouse pads and mice and then there's, I mean, is it more or less frustrating with certain games on which platform you're trying to play them on? Um. It, it can, well, it, it definitely depends what the game is like. Um, I know my solitaire game, I, I actually like to play that on the computer more than on the iPad. Because, but that's, it's more because that's what I'm used to playing it. Um, and so it, the, some of the games, like all the ones on the iOS, are going to kind of require your finger. Um, now, there are some that will synchronize, but not very many will go between iOS and the Mac OS. So you pretty much, you know, it's not like you're going to have to say, well, I, you know, I'm going to be over here touching the screen on the, my Mac because I wanted to do that on the iOS. So, but um, if you have, the game itself is probably going to kind of restrict you to what kind of input you're going to need. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely maximized to play. And some of them play better, as they said, some play better on an iPad than on your iPhone, just strictly because of the real estate, you know, the size of your screen. Although I can attest that flying an RC plane on your phone is kind of difficult. So. <laughs> you did, <that. laughs> did very well. Um, do you have more, any other bits to contribute, Joshua? Oh, I had a bit of nostalgia. Um, this kind of prompted me to go try to um, all this talk of the old video games made me think about an old game that I used to play on my Mac. Um, and so I found a program that actually let me run Mac OS 9 on top of my Mac. That's um, the game in itself. Way faster than it ever used to back in the day. <laughs> Still sitting here waiting for Mac OS 9 to start up. Did you ever play Oxid? Oxid? Ox Oxid. O X Y D. Marbles and rubber bands. That was pretty. There, there was a game that we used to play, and it was really fun until the computer got too fast, and I couldn't, you know, the ball would roll too fast. You couldn't keep up with it anymore. There we go. How many people remember your classic Mac OS 9 from 1999? runs on two of my machines. Of course, I didn't have 512 <laughs> megabytes back then. Um, but there is a few old ones. Um, I, uh, oh yeah, I forgot about, this was kind of a shock to go back to Mac OS 9 and then uh, not have the windows draw when I move them. And also trying to remember just how to shut down the computer. Um, but Prince of Persia, I don't know how loud this is right now was a game that I fell in love with. See how pretty it is? Uh, such a gorgeous game by somebody who originally had created games on the Apple II, um, which I had played. 
and in this one, the evil sultan kidnaps the princess, and then uh, when she won't turn her affections to him, he gives her one hour to live. And so the game was amazing because it actually played out. You had one hour to beat the game. scene you see the, the lonely princess and then the evil vizier uh, on my old Mac back in the day uh, it just pushed my Mac to the limits I remember the I always wanted the animation to be faster or smoother can you believe this game first came out on Apple II? Oh. Yeah, Alright, so the game starts out, you're thrown into the, the dungeons. You get 60 minutes left, and then uh, you control this little character. You can use the arrow keys to make him run around. You can jump. You can later catch a sword. If anybody noticed the floor ripple, there's lots of little traps in here. So that was state-of-the-art back in the 90s. Let's see, uh, I don't think, um, I actually downloaded a web browser for Mac OS 9 called iCab and realized I couldn't even open most web pages. It won't let you. I wonder why. <laughs> one of the links, but you'll get to oh, it cheers. just as fast. The thing that I love about the games from Cyan is that they're as beautiful as a movie, but you control it. You can go anywhere you want, and uh, it's, it's just amazing how, how beautiful the environments are that they've created. Can I make a change to that comment? You can go anywhere you can figure out how to get there. <laughs> so we started out the evening talking about a game called Mist, And um, what Lauren was asking about now was a game created almost 35 years later by the same team. Um, and it's just amazing how far the graphics have come. And yet, um, it still enables these uh, creators to realize this vision of making puzzles and uh, sailing them out there. We all lost everything. Everything but our stories. And they shouldn't be forgotten. I was three. It was April of 1983. Cecil, it was 1870 for you. Pam and Vera, you tell it like it was yesterday, but it's been 62 years since you saw that blast of light. That light. That's where all of our new stories begin. Streaked across the sky, mesmerizing, but unnerving. Even in daylight, Joseph, you said it was gloriously bright. But in the twilight, it was so light. Whether it was in the deep woods like Cecil or right outside town like Jane and Jenny, we were drawn to see more. None of us understood. But, well, we followed. And we all felt some kind of 
trepidation. Yeah. Attraction. As we approached You all remember, there was no turning away. It advanced, almost like purposeful, spinning slowly until, well, it found us, each of us. We should tell these stories because it, it saved us and there was be. So that was sort of the preamble, but it's that same scenery is just the same quality as you'll be walking through in the other sections of the game. So probably a good place to stop. Anybody that's thinking that they want to play that game, you have to be running probably Sierra or above, and you have to have a machine that has at least four core processor in it, 15 inch. Uh, iMac, I mean, if, excuse me, a 21 to 27 inch iMac or a 15 inch MacBook Pro uh, because it will not run uh, on the slower machines with only two processors. Even if it's an i7 processor, it's not going to run because it requires that much power. But, so we hope that we've given you some more ideas, even for all of you people that said you're not gamers. And, um, you know, let us know if we've twist, twisted your interest at all, and we can help with some other ideas, more samples. And we appreciate you coming. And I keep looking at the clock and thinking that it's early, and it's not. So, <laughs> because they haven't changed the clock in the back of the room. So. Well, I thought you were just talking. Thank you.